I was looking around Facebook Marketplace when I came across a Prusa i3 Mark II that was listed for only $200. I jumped at the opportunity knowing that Prusa makes one of the best 3D printers in the price category. I quickly messaged the seller and arranged to pick up the printer the next day. The printer came with one half roll of PLA, a brand new roll of ABS, and 120 hours of print time. To give you some backstory, I've been 3D printing for 6 years. My first 3D printer was the PrinterBot Maker Simples Edition. It was a plywood cantilever 3D printer with cotton twine as belts. I was saddened to hear a couple of years ago that PrinterBot went out of business as they were the pioneers of early riprap and DIY custom 3D printer builds. I had the printer for about 3 years until the extruder no longer wanted to heat up and the other parts of the printer started to degrade as well. Then I moved on to the Wanhao i3 which is a direct clone of Joseph Perusa's i3 design. I modded the printer beyond belief and still remains a workhorse to this day, with 1600 print hours. With this prior experience, I was confident going into a third hand 3D printer if problems were to arise. Everything looked great, but here are some of the problems that I ran into. Number 1. The heat bed connector was super bent, so I decided to take it apart to see what was wrong. Below it revealed an absolute train wreck of a soldering job, cold joints everywhere with a half a centimeter of exposed copper wire. I'm guessing that one of the owners broke the bed and tried to re-solder it themselves but the iron just wasn't hot enough so I had to redo the whole thing. Because the joint was so big it required a powerful soldering iron and luckily I just acquired a 75 watt soldering iron for my DIY e-bikes and DIY electric skateboard builds. Once that was done I used the screw to hold everything down and the bed heated up just fine. The bed probably would have worked fine if I didn't do this but my OCD says otherwise. Immediately after, I began to heat the printer up and the second problem came up. The extruder was coated in plastic. This happens when the print lifts, sticks to the nozzle, and the printer keeps going and extruding more plastic into a ball, not knowing anything. To clean this, I heated the nozzle up to 260 degrees and slowly used a small pair of tweezers to pull away at the plastic. Because the fan shroud was so close to the extruder assembly, I had to remove the fan shroud and because the extruder assembly was so advanced, I had to take a lot of things apart to get to it. Thankfully this was found because the fan shroud was 70% clogged and the heater and the thermistor wires were completely coated. I walked in this project assuming that the bed leveling would be completely automated, but boy was I wrong. When I tried to calibrate the Z function, everything looked alright, but the nozzle kept on homing 2mm higher than it's supposed to, which is 1.5mm higher than it's supposed to be. It took me quite a long time to find out what the problem was and it eventually it was the Pinda probe that was incorrectly set at the wrong height. So I went online and I found this file made by Nerdville, I'll link the Thingiverse file link down below, that seats the probe to the perfect height relative to the nozzle height. I know that on the Mark III, Prusa has developed a more reliable mounting mechanism with two nuts that hold the sensors in place. Currently on the Mark II, it's held in by pressure and two screws. Problem number four. This printer is super intelligent, equipped with sensors that compensate for bed leveling, removing the need to level the bed completely. Now with that being said, the added complexity comes at a cost when the system malfunctions. When I ran the XYZ calibration, the printer would return an error saying that the XY sensor calibration was compromised. This ended up being the Pinda probe not being able to locate the calibration points on the bed. At first I thought the probe was malfunctioning because the probe seemed to line up with the circles, but if the probe didn't work, how does the printer know where to home the z-axis and not drive itself into the bed? So that idea was quickly passed on. Then I moved to the theory that the chassis was off square, so I checked it with the square and everything seems fine. Then lastly, I resorted to Reddit and apparently it was a common problem where the y-axis gantry nuts are 2-4mm to four millimeters too short, so even though the sensor looks like it lines up, it doesn't actually. This resulted in me having to adjust 4 nuts 4 times before it finally worked. This process took around 4 hours to find the error and to fix and would have taken 2 minutes with bed screws. The fifth problem I ran into was a pretty common one. The belt on the Y axis rubs and it seems that it's a common problem on early Mark IIs because only one screw holds the idler bearing down and with the tension of the belts being so tight it forces a slant causing the rub. Forum users just left it as is but I'm currently searching for a more reliable solution. The Y carriage heater wire also seems to rub a lot from the constant movement. I might have some footage that shows this so future editing Aaron will see if he can find any video. Anyways, back to the problem. I did some searching around and it seems that the best solution was to download and use the upgraded Mark 2.5 mini Rambo enclosure. 
it has a more reliable way of securing the black tubing to prevent the bare wire from rubbing. No other hardware is needed for this upgrade. Lastly, this isn't so much of a problem but some of the printer improvements that I 3D printed. The cooling fan that the Prusa arrived with only blew air on one side, allowing for uneven cooling. So I printed a fan mount, thing giver's number shown on the screen, by RoboGenius in Petri that blows air from both sides. The swivel holder on the Mark II was so bad that it actually came loose on one of my practice prints and it dropped a brand new spool of PLA onto the end stop switch which snapped it clean off. So I printed a new spool holder made by user Area51 with the code on the screen right now and it works much better than the one it came with. I also performed a firmware upgrade and it took no longer than 3 minutes with the Prusa slicer and a USB-A cable. Now here are some of the things I noticed about the Mark II compared to the old printer I used. The print quality is absolutely astonishing with the walls being perfect with no micro layer lines apparent. This also contributes to the countless hours that Prusa has spent developing the print settings for this printer. From my experience with cheaper printers, the majority of the time is spent tuning the retractions, accelerations, print speeds, and temperatures, but if you go the Prusa route, it's all completely done for you. Number two. The A4982 motor drivers is surprisingly quiet in quiet mode, with the fan creating the most noise. I will be upgrading this to a Noctua system like on the Mark III or the Mark 2.5, but that will take a while. My printer currently sits on half inch thick foam so the desk doesn't act as an amplifier to the motors. This allows me to run prints in my bedroom, whereas on my previous printer, it would whiz and whirl to the point where I couldn't concentrate on anything. The Mark III has the TMZ steppers drivers, which are even more silent, which just blows my mind. The Prusa Mark II comes with a mini Rambo board, which was a big step up from the budget Marlin printers that I was familiar with. For example, the Ender 3, the CR10s, and the Wanhouse. Some of the features I found especially helpful are the estimated time remaining on the display the live Z height adjustment while printing, the silent mode and loud mode selection, and the auto bed leveling, but I just complain about that, so we won't talk about that. Like I said in my last video, I had a lot of personal projects I wanted to complete. One of the projects was to finally decorate my bedroom walls. I've left them blank for two years waiting for the best idea and the opportunity to finally come. And finally, this summer, I decided to scale up the SpaceX logo, then 3D print them, making the perfect opportunity to test the Prusa. This was how it turned out. People on my Instagram, you should follow me there, link on the screen, uh, were wondering how I attached it to drywall. I used a special type of drywall safe tape that's specifically designed for hanging photos, and the end result turned out pretty well. Right now, this printer sits in my bedroom for PLA based prints, and for bigger prints, they get sent to my printer in the outside deck that has proper ventilation and enclosures. I'm super satisfied with how the printer performed, and it turned out to be a fun week long project, and with the bigger build plate, I can fit more models at once compared to my previous printer. If you like this kind of stuff and other stuff like DIY electric bikes, DIY electric skateboards, FPB race drones, you should hit the subscribe button and like the video for my YouTube algorithm. I'll catch you all on my next video. Bye bye.